Hello everyone, welcome back to my daily series of circuit tutorials. In this video, we are going to make a rec rally buggy fuel system so you could drive around the buggy and have it run out of fuel and you can refuel it like a real car in real life. So let's get to making the car. So this place here, I don't think it's meant for a big car. So let's go to a place that's more open. So let's uh, let's go. Good transition. Here we are at the very first map that was used in my tutorial videos back in March of 2020. So it looks more open and more usable for a car. So let's get working. So here we are on the field. Plenty of space for a car. So let's get to work. So what you want to do is you want to take out your maker pen and uh, make sure you have gadgets on. Go to palette. First you want to get a car, so let's click props. So here we are in dynamic and we have up to three cars to choose. We have that one. Just the normal buggy. The truck. And the wolf. So the car I'm going to use is a buggy. You can use whatever car you want. So now that you have your car, you're just gonna come over here, get the circuit board for the car, and attach it to a reroute by going to commonly used under circuits V2. Click reroute, spawn it in, and wire to the very top pin that says ground vehicle, wire it to here. So now, no matter where the car goes, this pin will stay here. It also makes it a lot better to work with the pin now that it's just here. And also you can change between cars with the pin wire and it won't be as hard. So now what you want to do is you want to go into circuits v2, go to variables and click on the uh, int variable, spawn it in. We're going to configure it, uh, give it a name. So maybe something like uh, fuel. And for this system, we're going to make it synced. So it's the same value for every single player in the room. So now what you want to do is you want to get an event receiver. Configure that event receiver and set it to room loaded. And now whenever the room is first loaded, so when the player first joins, this execution is sent only once. So you want to wire it to the variable and now set the value to whatever percentage you want the fuel to start at when the room is first loaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to 100. And now what we can do is clone the fuel variable because we're going to need it for later. And we're going to get another event receiver. Configure that to update 30 hertz. And now we want to measure the speed of the car so that when the car is driving fast, the fuel will go down. And what you want to do to get that is get a get velocity chip. Get velocity spawn that in so now that we have our get velocity chip we're going to wire the target to the ground vehicle reroute that we made earlier now what you want to do is now that you have your vector 3 for the velocity you want to get a vector 3 split and now that you have your vector 3 split wire the velocity to the vector 3 and it should have numbers for the X, Y, and Z. And what you want to do to prevent it from going under zero is you want to get three different absolute value chips. Now that you have all three of those, wire the X, the Y, and the Z to their own absolute value chips. And then what you want to do is you want to get an add chip, configure it, and add an input and now you get all of the absolute values wire them together to the one add chip so now it outputs just one big number and that's the speed of the car and now what you want to do is you want to get an if and they're commonly used wire the input to the output pin on the event receiver and now click logic and then click greater than spawn that in so now that you have your greater than chip wire the a to the add chip 
and set the greater than to maybe a number like six. Now that you have your greater than with the number six, wire the result to the condition on the if. And if you wired it all correctly and you have your debug data and your debug execution wire flashes on, all of this should be glowing. And now what you need next is you need a random int chip. Spawn that in, wire the then output to the input on the int chip, set the max to maybe 10, and let's keep the minimum to zero. And now go into commonly used, spawn an if, and also spawn an equal chip. And now wire the value pin onto the A on the equal chip, and make the number on the B pin a number between zero and 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four. And now we're gonna get the equals boolean value and wire it to the condition on the if. And now wire the output on the random int to the input on the if chip. So if you don't have a fuel variable lying around, let's just delete it so we pretend it's not there. Then we can clone the variable that we used to make the percentage when the room loads. Get the clone tool, clone the variable, move it over here so that's more organized and then wire the then output to the value input on the variable. But, so if this number is equal to four, then it will set the fuel to 100, which is not what we want to do. What you wanna do is you wanna look for a subtract chip, spawn it in, wire the value pin on the variable chip to the first value on the subtract chip. Then click on this second value with the wire tool and open up your maker pen, and change the value to one. And then get this difference pin and wire it to the input pin on the fuel. So this will subtract one from the fuel. And now to make the buggy stop working when there's no fuel, clone the event receiver or make a new one, configure it, and set the event to fuel changed. So now whenever the fuel variable is changed, an execution will fire out from this event receiver. And now get an if from commonly used, go into logic and get less or equal, wire the A to the fuel variable value and keep this as zero. And then wire the result to the condition on the if and wire the output execution to the input value on the if. So if you wire this right, this will check if the fuel is less or equal to zero. And if it is, we need to turn off driving for the car by getting the chip under object, scroll all the way to vehicle. And now what you wanna get is you want to get a ground vehicle set driving enable. Spawn it in, make sure the enabled is false, set the target to the reroute that we used earlier. And now wire this input to the then on the if for the fuel change. And just in case, if you don't want to break your circuit, you can clone the ground vehicle set driving enabled. We can get this input pin wired to the else output on the if chip. Set the target to this value on the reroute and set the enabled to true by just clicking it. And now you want to see how much fuel you have by getting a text gadget by clicking gadgets, CV2 gadgets, and then clicking text V2. And now what you want to do is go somewhere in the car and place it wherever you want. I'm going to place it on top of the dashboard. Make sure to align it good. And when you're ready, spawn in a gizmo by clicking gadgets and gizmos, spawn in a clamp, wire the top piece of the clamp to the text gadget, and then wire the middle of the gizmo to the car. And if your text isn't where you want it, just move it to where you want it. And now it will stay in its place no matter where the car is moved. So now that you have that set up, you wanna get the circuit board for this text gadget, move it over here. If you wanna keep it organized, then detach it from the object so that no matter where the text goes, the circuit board will stay here. And now what you wanna get is you want to get a string format chip and a two string chip. Wire the value to the green pin on the variable for your fuel, and then wire the result to the value on the string format. Set the format to whatever you want to set it to. 
So to make sure that the variable is used in the format, you gotta do curly bracket zero, curly bracket. And that will format the string to whatever is in the first value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set mine to fuel, curly bracket zero, curly bracket percent. So now it'll say fuel zero percent or whatever string is in this value. So if I set this value, for example, I set it to 334%, it'll say fuel 34%. Let's rewire that and wire this result to the text on the text v2 circuit board. And now clone your event receiver for the fuel changed, wire the output to the set text and wire the set text again to this fuel change when the room loads. So there should be two inputs on the circuit board. So whenever the room loads and the fuel is set to 100 or when the fuel is changed, it will change the text. Now, if you did this all in one instance for the room, the fuel would say zero. So what you wanna do is you should get a button by going to gadgets, CV2 gadgets, spawning in a button V2. And then we go over here, clone the fuel variable, and then wire the input to the pressed execution for the button. So when we click this button, it'll set the ver fuel variable to 100. And if you wired everything right, and we go back to the car, you can see that the fuel changes when the car is moving. As you see, the value is going down very fast. So let's go back to our spot. So to make sure if the car is going faster or slower, you can raise this six to maybe around something like 10. So now the fuel has a chance to go down and you're going much faster. Fuel is almost low. Let's make sure it works. Okay, so the car kept rolling when the driving was disabled and it went to negative 12. So let's go back to our workspace and fix it. Eh, eh. Oh, the car doesn't work. All right, I called the towing company. My car is back. And now we come over here, which is right here. So you wanna get another if. Now that you have your new if, wire the then on the old if to the new input on the new if and set the else, wire it to the fuel, subtract one. And now we need a condition for the if chip to work. So if you want to keep the amount of chips you use in the room lower, then we can reuse the same less or equal we use for the fuel change, which is basically the same thing because we use the same variable so we should wire this boolean all the way to the condition on this if. So if we set our fuel to 100, hop back in the car, and drive it. It's gonna take a little bit to get the fuel all the way down, so I'm just gonna time lapse it. All right, the fuel is getting low on the car. Now the fuel is empty, and now it's at zero percent. And now I can't drive the car anymore. It's at a complete stop. Now I can't get anywhere because I have no fuel. So now that we fixed our circuit, the fuel now says zero percent. So just like what I mentioned earlier, you can use an execution to set the fuel so that you don't have to click the button every time. You can maybe make it so that whenever a fuel can is placed on the buggy it'll set the fuel but that can be made by you and like I said earlier since we have a reroute we can use any car we want and easily switch between the two so if we get another car here and we just move our text gadget so I'm just gonna delete this car there's gonna be a lot of error sounds so let's just uh, take off our update 30 hertz temporarily 
bring our text over to where you want the new car to be and then wire the middle of the gizmo to the car again and now we can wire this null value on the reroute to this output on this car and now that the values are valid again let's wire the input on the if to the output on the event receiver again so that it will make our creation glow and work so now it should work for this car as well all right that's all for this video on how to make a working fuel system for the car i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found this helpful and if you did please leave a like it shows your support and it also lets me know that you love videos like these and i should make these more often and also i would love it if you commented the things you made with this fuel system like an rp map or maybe a raceway it all would be very cool and i would love to see it so that's it for now i hope you all had a good day or a good night wherever you are whatever time it is and i'll see you all next time catch you later goodbye